So I had cancer in 2007, uh, testicular cancer, which spread to lymph nodes and lungs, um, ended up having an operation and chemotherapy, and it made it impossible for me to have children, actually. So me and my partner went through IVF and had a little baby, a uh, little baby boy. Um, second try, so the first wasn't successful, but I found the period where we was going through IVF, there was um, a lot of patients that I was going to that have also had IVF. It's just not easy and having a baby is a massive privilege and it's not a given that you know you can just get pregnant and have a, have a little life on your hands. It's, it's not easy and I think them ones affect me more because I know how badly someone wants it. To have to go through IVF is hard enough, but you have to want the baby to go through it as well and I think putting all that pressure on yourself and going through what is really really difficult IVF, with, with IVF it's not easy yeah, so I was 20 when I went through the cancer and I think the hardest thing for me was that seeing my mum like so both of my mum's parents have died of cancer and for her son to have it now I think that hurt seeing mum how mum was and dad they were both distraught obviously must have been absolutely brutal for him at the time with regards to fertility I was not even thinking about it. I was 20 years old. I was having fun, <laughs> living living my life. But um, yeah, I froze some sperm at the time because they make you do that. And I probably wouldn't have chose to do it because I was that young. But they, it was a good thing that they did make me freeze it because that's what I've obviously used for this IVF now. <laughs> I ended up having quite an intensive chemotherapy treatment. Um, the tumor, so I had a tumour around my lymph nodes that had grown around the liver and things like that and so they had to cut that out with big surgery um, on New Year's Eve and chemotherapy was kind of at points five days a week 12 hours a day was full-on intensive chemotherapy for a 14 week period I think when you get a diagnosis of cancer you do think that's your initial thought I'm gonna die and that's what I thought when they told me just in a room with these two doctors they told me you've got cancer and just, you, you get no time to process. So it's just go, go, go. And I think that was really hard for me. I'd say with regards to the cancer thing for me, so I left it around eight months before I actually kind of started getting it looked at. And even then I went to the doctors, I mentioned I had belly pain. I mentioned like back pain and things like this. And I got wrong diagnosis three times because of me not telling them the actual symptoms that I've got so I got diagnosed with appendicitis for one and they were planning on removing my appendix but then I got uh, discharged the next day from hospital because I had no more pain so it couldn't have been my appendix and then I got told I had IBS and it was never that I took medication for a week but all this was because I didn't tell them about a lump I had on one of my testicles I really really should have and it's a massive thing that I think there's a stigma around boys and how proud we are like especially at that age, 20 years old, I didn't really want to tell anyone I got a lump on my ball. <laughs> Not a doctor, no one, I didn't want to tell anyone. Um, but I think it's so important because if I did, it would have been a much easier treatment process. I wouldn't have gone through what I did for probably a year of my life I've written off because of getting anyone getting better. But yeah, I just think it's so important to check. Just check yourself. Just And if you've got something, be, just own up, just say something because it will be easier for you in the long run. There isn't this proud thing anymore. You don't need it. You don't need it. <laughs>